Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 374. Uh, each week we meet here to uh, review the answers given in the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us today we have David uh, Rosam. David is uh, uh, a leading internet marketer. He is um, based uh, in West Sussex uh, on the sunny south of uh, the UK or England. Um, and you can find David at davidrosam.com. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the, uh, um, the, the Google AdSense uh, community. And uh, Tim Kappa is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, Tim is um, webmaster of um, onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. Uh, Tim and Masataki and David, all located in the UK uh, this week. Um, and um, and yeah, most weeks. Yeah. Well, see, sometimes we have, um, um, oh, goodness me, Micah uh, is generally with us, and, and so he's not. Uh, but, but, but this week, without Micah being present, we have no people from the USA. All right. God help me. We've got uh, 11 questions tonight. Um, the first one um, uh, is titled, um, only have, has 40 pages, but the crawl statistics are 380 pages per day. It's from Nathan Nikolai Guidi, um, who uh, um, actually we should call it the, the Nathan Guidi Show uh, tonight, where he's asked so many questions. Anyway, what um, what what word do we have uh, on this? Uh. Tim was doing a breath in, so I'll let him go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's obviously finding something else to crawl. Um, but then again, the crawl stats are 380 pages per day. Uh, don't think they're actually correct, are they? Um, but it's obviously finding other things to crawl. Uh, Amir Latif is saying, you know, you check your sitemap. Yeah, certainly do that. Um, uh, but depending on, obviously without looking at the site, but depending on the site, you may have uh, all sorts of other things in there that you don't consider pages, but you know, it's, uh, um, parameter query pages. I don't know if this is an e-commerce site or, or like what it does or all sorts. Um, I think the only answer, well, the, the answer lies in looking at Google Search Console and see what has been, um, what has been spiders. Um, I think that's that's the thing, isn't it? They, there are clearly others this, being spidered, apart from the the, the forty uh, HTML pages. Yeah, and I agree with uh, Michael Martinez. Who, oh, I'm going to say um, they may recrawl the same page several times a day. Um, your those server log files will show you what the bots are requesting. End of quote. And um, yeah, I think that that's the way to uh, to know for certain what Google is crawling. Um, Although yeah. I, 
would be surprised to find Google um, recrawling, you know, a small site like this, recrawling the same page several times a day. Um, yeah. So then you, I think, you know, Tim's point. Unless there's a lot of activity on this site, of course. Yeah. So it might be parameters like uh, Tim mentioned. Um, um, it, there may be something in the response header that may indicate the content is short and is only valid for a short time, which is unlikely. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Michael because that's that way you know for sure what is being looked at by um, the by the Google bots because you know it could be the the mobile bot it could be the um, the desktop one as well so you know that might be that you know if you have two radically different um, web page for the, the other thing the other thing that I was just like I was just thinking to myself uh, crawl stats. I can't remember seeing those in the new search console. It's actually in the legacy section of crawl of of, of uh, search console now. Uh, and if it's in the legacy section, is that still updated correctly? Mm. Um, and equally, when he says three hundred and eighty pages per day, is that the high, the average, the low? I mean, like. Which one is he giving us? But let's just say that's the actual average. You know, there's. I don't. I don't even know if the if it's in the legacy thing. If it's if it's if it's still relevant. Like, is it still updated? I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, he does say three hundred and eighty pages per day at peak, and fifty-four. Oh pages right, yeah. Per day. So fifty-four probably is the average. Um, but I think this is again an instance where you need to have access to your logs and look for information there rather than um, or using a tool or anything like that. I think you, you know, at certain times you do need to go and have a look at your server logs, even though it's cumbersome and horrible. Don't be at all. Look at your look at your server logs. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, uh, Googlebot um, will um, um, will you know uh, keep the records uh, of the last time it crawled your site, which might uh, have been yesterday, might have been a month ago, um, but. Um, um, if 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 Googlebot discovers um, on crawling your site that um, you updated your site uh, seven times um, in in the um, in the month, um, sorry, <laughs> seven times daily, you made seven changes every day. Uh, all, all of a sudden, Googlebot's going to check your page set seven times a day um, to. Um, um, the, to get the latest version. Um, one thing that uh, Ammon John said, uh, he said, for goodness sakes, don't block access to your CSS and JavaScript or, or pages can't be properly rendered and, and so subsequently won't be included in the index. Um, so, um, you know, that, that's a, a very, very good advice. And, and as a general thing, why, why does the obsession with um, um, uh, blocking crawling of, of your website? Um, what's wrong with um, Googlebot uh, um, crawling every file on your site um, day after day? That's what it's there for. Anyway, I think I think people have become obsessed with you know when they read articles about. Um, <laughs> What the fuck? What do they call it now? Crawl, crawl optimization and crawl budget. Um, yeah, crawl budget and all that. And people get obsessed now. 
Mm. Yeah. Oh, Michael, um, w welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, Michael uh, is um, the, the um, president of um, a, a um, SEO meetup group um, uh, close to Silicon Valley. Uh, he's on the west coast of uh, the USA. All right. Um, let's go to the next. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. Um, Chris Green asks a question titled, Duplicated Product Descriptions from the Manufacturer. Uh, he said, hey, guys, thoughts on product descriptions being... Uh, duplicated from the manufacturer. It seems a lot of competitors are doing this. See screenshots. So would it be worthwhile making them unique? Yeah, totally. You should always make them uh, unique to you and to your business and why you're selling them. Um, not only from, you know, obviously search results, but also don't stop there. You know, um, I've always said, you know, um, try not to use the manufacturer's given um, images because you've probably seen it. You've probably searched for a product and just seen all the same stuff, the same description, the same images. And it's like, well, this does just doesn't help me. Um, so even try and make your images unique, you know, do your own photographs of them, brand them up, you know, different, diff different things. Yeah certainly try and make everything unique for your brand um, and your customers. Thank you, Tim. Anybody? Yeah, and just the thing to keep in mind is if you're letting them be the same, how are you differentiating yourself from the rest of the web? Um, because oftentimes a lot of other sites potentially are pulling in the same product. Uh, and, say, and they're going to be putting in the same manufacturing description potentially then too. So uh, you need to kind of keep that in mind of like, well, what is the value add that you're providing on top of that if you're using that same description? Um, and so if you're not doing it, you know, Google's only going to want to show one or two uh, sites that you know, are, are of value for that most of the time if it's just a pure duplication of what's what's being shown so just make sure you are um you know doing something unique with it so that you you can stand out and, and uh is it enough you know from google's end but really in the end from the user side yeah do you do you sort of think in terms of adding information rather than sort of trying to play with the copy itself. Because the manufacturer's descriptions are given for a certain purpose, and you know, they put their, a lot of effort into describing what their products are. So is it more a question of making sure that you have more information, more value added to that description on the page? than sort of figuring with the copy itself. Right. I mean, yeah, you can get away with kind of just adding value elsewhere. That's that's definitely uh, possible. Um, <clears throat> the things to just kind of keep in mind with that, though, is whether or not um, the value we're adding is seen to be a value add to either users or Google. Um, so you're just, you're running a higher risk of, the extra effort elsewhere that you're doing is is not going to be taken as uh, making the page um, enough of a difference in Google's eyes. Definitely doable. Uh, I don't disagree about that and, and the effort on that. But um, it's just something to bear in mind is of uh, kind of what your your model is, how much you're going to be adding on top of it, um, and how much of that can be you know a good chunk of a, of a value add in addition. Excellent. Thank you, Micah. All right, let's move on. Um, if nobody has any objections, we'll go to number three on our run list. This one from David Hamilton. He, he wants to know, should I rename the URLs or create new posts? David said, hi, gang. So here's my situation. I've got a, a four-year-old site 
and I've done pretty much zero SEO work on it, search engine optimization work on it. Traffic has all come from paid uh, um, traffic, uh, paid advertising, PPC, uh, as that's my main traffic gen generation skill set. Um, doing a quick, quick, I don't know what that means. Uh, I barely get any traffic from any keywords uh, of relevance. Uh, I also don't have any inbound links of real um, relevance. The question is, can I rename the URLs to be more SEO friendly or do I still need uh, to create brand new posts? Well, he did some more but before you go on. Uh, I, he said, I see warning about renaming links at all, but wonder if this really applies in a situation like mine to Google. Sorry, go ahead, please. That's okay. Sorry, I thought you'd finished. I wasn't reading it. I, was, I just thought that was a, a gym stop. Uh, yeah. I should read the questions while you're, you're, you're uh, I don't, reading. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why he he would want to read the URLs. Um, you know, he's... So, first off, um, unless you're putting this onto a new platform and the URLs will change, leave the URLs a, a, a alone um you can do one or two things from, from then on you can add new content or you can work on your content you have at the moment um if that if what you have at the moment are really landing pages for your ppc i, I suggest you leave them as they are and build some new content um that, that, that will work um, for, for organic search. Um, so you'll need to you'll need to do your keyword research, you'll need to look at your your competitors, um, you'll need to understand what people are looking for now. You know, you'll get a you'll get a lot of that information from what's happening in your BPC. Um, you can see what people are, are clicking on, you can see what people are buying from. Um, so that's a good start. Um, but I, my feeling is that you should just leave your pages and your URLs alone and start uh, building some some more content. Yep. Anybody else? Okay. I must call out uh, people like Michael Martinez who answer questions uh, through the week, um, and he's given a, a great answer here. Uh, um, for David, um, and he says, um, you, you should be fine. He said, I've changed thousands of URLs over the years and have not encountered a problem except where I omitted to redirect the URLs. Um, that can be frustrating, especially when you've spent years advising people to redirect the URLs. Okay, let's go to the next, if there's nothing else. Number four on our run list, it's from Ilya Pushkarev. Uh, what will happen to my ranking if I delete some pages? He said, I need to downsize my website. Um, he said, if I delete some old pages that are no longer of use, will this affect the ranking of one certain page? What does he mean by that? Um, okay, so okay. in terms of deleting some of the posts uh, on your site, so how out of date they are, if a lot of the older ones are linking to that specific page, yeah, it, it could affect the rankings. If we're talking um, really old, doesn't really link to anything, you know, you're, you're cleaning up <clears throat> your site, which can potentially be a, a benefit in the end. Um, if, if a lot of those older posts are pretty much junk. So the question really does become, um, you know, what, what are you deleting? Um, where do they link out to? Um, did they ever get a lot, any links in the past? Um, are you highlighting them anywhere? Uh, you know, if they're really not important, really old, 
never got much traffic or links, then you're, you're going to be fine in deleting them. Thank you, Mike. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, the the the, um, the question I have is um, why does Ilya believe he has to downsize his website? Um, is that because he's been reading that it's a good idea to get rid of old content? Is it because he's running up against um, size on his hosting? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think you I think you need to to be asking why you believe that you should downsize your website um, because if it's if it's just because you've read something somewhere and it's not actually driven by where your website is at the moment um, yeah I, I think you know, go ahead David sorry now, go ahead. Hello, hello. You had a had a, a very quick uh, drop tap, well, and, and you're already back. <laughs> Am I cutting out? Um, you did cut out, uh, but you're back again now. Um, I, I, your vision is still frozen. If my image is frozen, but you can hear me. Um, yeah, as I say, um, what Micah said earlier about. Um, about traffic and um, uh, 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 and links, bang on. Um, but you, but you might not have to do this work. You know, you, you might. So basically, if I think what David's saying is that, is it really necessary for you to do this if you have a small site? Kind of, what's the point? Or uh, do you have other priorities that might uh, be more worthwhile to actually go through? I think it's kind of what he's getting at. It's like, what, think about kind of what's really important and do you really need to delete just some pages? Um, it, it's generally not going to be worthwhile to really do that versus, you know, focus on improving the ones you want to work on. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Micah. All right, let's um, move on to the next. And in uh, our run list, uh, uh, it's question number five. Um, it's another one from Nathan uh, Gady. Um, he gives us um, three URLs. Um, I'm sure that he meant... Uh, it, 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 he meant them all to be example.com, but there's one there that's xmaple.com. That one will get indexed separately. Um, no, it won't, it, won't, it, won't get, um, it won't get published at all unless he's uh, um, paying a registration fee for xmaple.com. Um, yeah, um, he said, uh, as, as Ammon John said in the comments, uh, um, Google will um, work out, work, work them out mostly and canonicalize them. Um, but this is a bad practice and very much a, a beginner's mistake. And, and that's it. Uh, uh, it, it, um, it. It is. You really only want one copy of each page. Any, anybody else on this one? Um, I mean, just the main thing is, uh, you, you know, yeah, they, they can be seen to be indexed separately. Um, if they're getting, getting links, you probably want to just make sure it's all connected together. Um, whichever one you want to choose is going to be more of your consistency of across the site is really what you want to look for. It's not a huge deal for, for choosing one over the other. Um, but just make sure this consistent, just easier for your, your tracking, for understanding through the site. Um, and outside of that, just want to make sure that, uh, you know, you are stuck with one kind of specific thing in general. Okay. Thank you, Micah. Um, let's wander on to the next on our run list from Chris Green. 
What monthly SEO tasks do you guys usually do uh, in, in, in between drinking copious amounts of uh, uh, PIMS number one? Um, what do you guys do? Uh, well, I don't do any link building, as Tim says. Um, so, uh, and it really depends on what I'm doing for the client. Um, but it's certainly to do with content, and it's certainly to do with looking at what kind of content they need to be building. Um, usually the, the, the content is written by the client, so I, I'm briefing the client, I'm editing and optimising their, their content, um, and quite often I do the final tweaks when I put it up. But it's it's content really that's that, that's the uh, the centre of all this. Um, aside from that, I um, I do a monthly report, and I um, I decide what needs to be done the following month. Um, I think that that uh, reporting is not just a a, a back a backward looking exercise. It's to do with what you're doing next. So I guess that's what I do. Thank you for that insight, uh, David. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Does anybody else have anything to add before we go? Okay, let's go here. Uh, another one from Nathan Guidi. Uh, what to do when Google Search Console uh, uh, tracks.com and uh, .com slash separately. Uh, he said, what's the best course of action if Google Search Console uh, tracks.com and .com slash separately? Does that mean that the page rank um, is unique to uh, each URL? Uh, it means both are ranking. Um, yeah, you basically have, they're, they're seen as two different pages, a slash and without a slash, similar to what we just talked about, um, <clears throat> is something that can get indexed separately. And so you just need to redirect or canonicalize the two together so that um, Google will understand, hey, these two are the same uh, page. And so then um, you don't have that uh, issue anymore. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Okay. Let's go to the next. Ross Raffin uh, asks a question titled, uh, is use using exact match anchor text on internal links? Um, he said, can there be negative effects if, if you use exact match anchor text on internal links? Um, I don't hardly think so. Yeah, you don't have to really worry about it unless you're basically approaching, you know, spamming your site with the same keyword over and over on the, same, on the ind individual page itself, individual pages, like a lot of that same thing so that it looks like more like keyword spam. Um, yeah, I generally don't think you need, it's something you need to worry about. Okay. All right, so we'll move on from that. Again, I, I call out people like Emin Johns uh, who um, contribute so much to the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, with the uh, uh, ready answer, the quick and ready answers that they provide uh, um, throughout the week. Um, this one from Nathan Guidi again. He said, do I need priority values for sitemap URLs when a website only has 10 pages? Rob Watts gives the only answer possible, no. Um, so I won't put you guys through uh, having to answer this one. Um, all right, uh, let's go. 
Very easy to overthink this business. Um, Nathan Guidi asked another one, named anchor links in a sitemap. He said, do links like those, oh, he said, hey, he said, do links like those need to be on the sitemap, https uh, slash slash mywebsite.com slash uh, hash um, lower menu. And uh, how does Google uh, treat them? Um, those, um, those are anchors to uh, the links within pages. They're not pages, so they shouldn't be in your sitemap. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen any in sitemaps. Um, so, um, no, don't put them in your sitemap. Yeah, the only time you're going to see those pages uh, show up, well, first off, Google won't um, look at anything past the the hashtag for kind of uh, for what it's worth in in the SERPs, general SERPs. The only exception to that is uh, kind of usages of um, subsections within your site, and they'll have they'll give you a little bit of the site links to kind of jump to X section. Uh, that's the only exception for for when you'll see them being used, but uh, the, they're recognized as just. Uh, or it's not the throw cranes. They're ignored when it comes to as the part of the URL. Excellent. Thank you, Micah. Nathan said, he said, I find myself fixing more than building. Um, yes, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, um, this is our chosen profession. We choose to live uh, and endure the pain and suffering of constantly fixing. All right, that's uh, yeah, go ahead. Who was that? That was me. Um, it was just, just occurred to me that uh, Nathan mentioned that he's using WordPress um, earlier. It, it, I'm presuming that this is his site that he's asking questions about rather, rather than client sites. If he's using WordPress, um, he should um, let it do what it does without intervening. It's a content management system. It generally does things pretty well. Put um, put Yoast or something in it, and you know there there are lots and lots of good tweaks you can make. But there are uh, there 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 are many. You should just let let it get on with it uh, rather than try and do clever things with it. Yeah, excellent. Uh, thank you, David. All right, let's um, move on to number 11 on our run list. It's from Marina Fiore Kirby. Um, it's titled, Will a link to an external site affect search engine optimization negatively? Um, he said, if you sell, sell products on a drop shipment website like Redbubble, should you have a link in your website navigation to it? Or would the drop-off go to the external uh, site effect SEO, search engine optimization, negatively. Um, I don't that a link to an external site will not affect um, SEO. I'm just wondering whether this question is, is actually getting at something else and badly worded. Um, is the worry that the um, that making that link will um, make uh, will stop people staying from staying on uh, the the main site and they will toddle off onto Redbubble um, and somehow be lost? Um, depends how you use your your link, where you put it. Um, you know, at some stage or other, you're probably going to be. Um, putting your your, uh, your your customers off to Redbubble, but uh, it depends how the uh, um, how how the, um, the, the 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 checkout um, an ordering mechanism works. I, I don't know Redbubble, um, so I'm not sure. You know, maybe this is not about SEO. Maybe it's about what happens to people on the site. Yeah, I'd probably investigate more on how I could complete the entire purchase on my own site even if you even if you're a drop shipment 
you should be able to then still keep them on site, add to cart, check out uh, how you deal with the actual procurement of the of the um, product. Um, of course, if you're affiliate, that's another sort of issue. You are going to be sending them to there, but then you need, but that's more to do with your code tracking because uh, that's how you got paid. But drop shipping, I think I'd probably look at your system and see how to have the customer complete the entire purchase via your site. Yep, thank you, Tim. All right. Um, and, and if I can add my 10 cents worth, uh, um, this I'm not familiar with Redbubble either, but they've probably got millions of products from uh, thousands of um, affiliates um, loading products from uh, data feed, and, and a link will be more or less valueless, uh, um, and probably also no follow. Um, it really is um, not a thing to, to, to be getting concerned about. Um, all right, let's go to, well, actually, there won't be one for the next. It's uh, thank you for watching time. Um, we've done it again. We've answered uh, all of the uh, questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back at the same time next week to do this all again. But first, I must thank uh, David Rosam, uh, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, uh, Micah Fisher Kirshner. Thank you guys uh, for your att attendance here and your contributions. You make us such a valuable resource. And um, also, we thank people on uh, the site who uh, answer questions. Uh, um, through the week, people like Ammon Johns, uh, uh, Brenda Michelin, uh, um, Michael Martinez. Um, it, it, we thank you all, and it's gratefully received. Okay, we'll, we'll be gone now, um, I think. What's going on here? We'll try that.